from Loretto Abbey, home to the Sisters of Loretto since 1928, and the Loretto Abbey Secondary School. And with the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from three donors. The first is Colette Hungerbuehler from Hawkesbury, Ontario, in memory of her late husband, Kurt, who died four years ago today, and in thanksgiving for the televised daily mass. The second is Joachim McNichols from Centerville, Ontario, for continued good health, for the repose of the souls of Donna, Georgina, and Gary, and all the members of the McNichols, Fisher, and Mallon families. Also for the sick and for the return to the faith of family members. The third is Rita McGraw and family from Thunder Bay, Ontario, for the souls in purgatory, for spiritual and temporal needs, and for graces and blessings on all priests and religious. Our thanks to our donors for this gift of the Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. amen. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Strengthen in us, O Lord, the faith by which the blessed apostle Bartholomew clung wholeheartedly to your Son, and grant that, through the help of his prayers, your church may become for all the nations the sacrament of salvation. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Revelation. One of the seven angels who had the seven bowls full of the seven last plagues came and said to me, come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. And in the spirit, he carried me away to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. It has the glory of God and a radiance like a very rare jewel, like jasper, clear as crystal. It has a great high wall with 12 gates, and at the gates, 12 angels. And on the gates are inscribed the names of the 12 tribes of the Israelites. On the east, there were three gates. On the north, three gates. On the south, three gates. And on the west, three gates. And the wall of the city has 12 foundations, and on them are the 12 names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. The word of the Lord. Amen. 
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. After Jesus had called Philip to be a disciple, Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And Jesus said to Nathanael, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. This gospel teaches us the best method of reaching out to others with the good news about Jesus. Like Philip did, all we need to say is, come and see. 
We don't need to badger or belittle or argue with others to get them into the kingdom of God. Such an approach seldom works. Philip's come and see approach is a much better way. We should be inviting others to attend mass to become part of our fellowship of faith. We should listen to where they are and ascertain their needs and then share the good news with them in prayer and in active service. But keep in mind, the aim is to help them to make a commitment to Jesus, not to an institution. You may see the church as a welcoming church, but others may not. They may not know how to get in. A few weeks before he took his own life, Vincent van Gogh, the great Dutch artist, painted a picture of a church. As you look at the church in the picture, it emanates a dimly eerie light from inside. But as you look more closely, you see that the church has no doors. There's no way to get in. It's a very haunting message for us who are called to bring people to Christ. Do our own parish policies, rules, and way of worship keep others from finding a way in? Do our dogmatic attitudes send a message that we do not want people in our church if they are not the right kind of people? The simple fact of the matter is that we need each other. Our doors should be open wide to welcome everyone, no matter where they might be on their journey. One day at the beach, I observed two children, a boy and a girl, playing in the sand. They were hard at work making a sandcastle. They had gates and towers and moats and internal passages. Just when they were nearly finished building this great castle, a huge wave came along and knocked it down. Now, I expected the children to burst into tears, but they surprised me. Instead, they ran up the bank, away from the shore, laughing and holding hands. And then they sat down and started to build another castle. Now, they had taught me an important lesson. All the things in our lives, all the complicated structures we spend so much time and energy creating are built on sand. Only our relationships with other people endure. Sooner or later, a wave will come and knock down what we have worked so hard to build up. When that happens, only the person who has somebody's hand to hold will be able to laugh and begin again. Like Philip did to Bartholomew, we welcome whosoever may come into our fellowship. We need each other. We do not want to be a church with no doors and no way in. The Christian faith is not so much propositional as it is relational, and all relationships take time to cultivate. We need to invite others to learn from them and appreciate the gifts that they bring to our community and to support one another in times of adversity. Anne Lamont, in her memoir, Traveling Mercies, talks about answering an invitation to visit a small congregation on the fringe of San Francisco. She went there with mixed feelings. The church was homely and impoverished, but Anne was mesmerized by the hymns wafting out of the church building. She stood in the doorway and listened to those hymns. The congregation consisted of about 30 people, and when the service was over, some of them shook her hand and gave her a hug. Anne went to that church about once a month, but usually left before the sermon. She did not want to be preached to. It was the people and their singing above all else that captivated her. Finally, one Sunday, she decided to sit in a pew off by herself. She had been drinking heavily lately and had become sick. And that night she had the sensation of someone being with her, hunkered down in the corner of her room. At first she thought it might be her father who had died recently, 
but suddenly she realized it was Jesus. And she was appalled when she thought about her progressive friends and what they would think of her if she became a Christian. She turned to the wall and said out loud, I would rather die. Nonetheless, she felt him just sitting there in the corner of her sleeping loft, watching her with patience and love. Finally, she fell asleep, and in the morning, the feeling was gone. The next week, she went to the church, and the last hymn caused her to weep and be filled with joy at the same time. She felt as if someone was holding her and rocking her like a scared child. Finally, she cried out loud, All right, I quit. You can come in. And that was how she described her moment of conversion. It took a long time, but eventually that welcoming congregation with its open doors and its simple witness helped her to make that remarkable journey of faith. And we can do the same thing for others, simply by inviting them to come and see. Let us now ask God to give us a true welcoming spirit that gives life to those in need of him. That we may be open to sharing our faith with our neighbor, especially those who are devalued and impoverished by the culture in which we live. We pray to the Lord. Lord that Christ will help us remove those fears that keep us from inviting others to come and see. We pray to the Lord. Lord that in giving ourselves to Christ, we will overcome the hatred, prejudice, and discrimination in our world. We pray to the Lord. Lord that the loving touch of Christ may be felt by those in our television community who are burdened by illness and loss. We pray to the Lord. Lord that we may become Christians who share with others the healing compassion that comes to us from our Savior. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our Almighty Father, help us fashion lives of faith that will speak to the needs of others and help them find their dignity as beloved children of God. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Yes. That's what we got for our Lord oh God, we ask you to see the gifts we offer you with humble, contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity. Fence me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we celebrate anew at the Feast of St. Bartholomew, O Lord, we pray that we may obtain your help through the intercession of the Apostle, and whose honor we bring you this sacrifice of praise. Through Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us 
give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For you have built your church to stand firm on the apostolic foundations, to be a lasting sign of your holiness on earth, and not for all humanity, your heavenly teaching. Therefore, now and for all ages unending, with all the hosts of the angels, we sing to you with all our hearts, crying out as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. As we celebrate the feast day of the blessed apostle Bartholomew, we have received the pledge of eternal salvation, O Lord, and we pray that it may be of help to us both now and for the life to come through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The is ended. Go in peace. Amen. Our thanks to our three donors, for the gift of this Mass. In the summer months, everything slows down a little, including our mail. Everything that is except our expenses in broadcasting the daily Mass. Winter, fall, summer, spring, they say the same. So do keep us in mind, and remember, whatever you can send us will help keep Daily Mass on television.